In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord says that the devil is the prince of this world, and he tries to put his people, his servants, in prominent places to become rulers of this world, to co-rule, so to speak, with the, e with the evil one. And the evil one, of course, has his agenda. He's preparing himself for the end. He wants to do as much work as possible. Sometimes he expedites his work, like we see at the very time of the crucifixion of our Savior, after the resurrection of the de after the resurrection of the great Lazarus, the devil works overtime to get to the minds of the Pharisees to make sure that the Lord Jesus Christ is taken away as soon as possible through crucifixion. That the Savior Jesus Christ be humiliated and that people look upon him and wag their heads, that they spit upon him, that they make fun of him, that they mock him. But of course, the evil one did not know what was awaiting him. And in his devices, because of the great deal of malice that he has and evil that he has, he does not know what is to his profit. And he doesn't know that he's being duped when he's being duped. And so he tries to put people in prominent places. And as you have seen, in politics, recent politics, not even just recent, but we see in the rulers of this world many times the agenda of the demons. That is what happened, that is what we saw at the Bolshevik Re Revolution. The church gave us many martyrs. And that is what we see now when we hear about abortion, for example, and when we hear about how it's done, and when we hear about what exactly happens to the child in the womb of the mother during this whole process of dismemberment. They cut one piece of the child and another piece, there's another piece, and of course the child reacts to everything. In fact, right when the device enters into the womb, it has a reaction. This we know because of modern technology, and because of modern technology, actually many things have been verified that we know from the fathers of the church. When the seed enters into the womb of a woman, and conception takes place, we know from ultrasounds also that there's a spark, some type of a light comes out of it. And that is the, the time when a person, when a person is conceived is the time when there is a human being. That is when the person takes his form, that is when he brings his existence into this world through the grace of Christ, through God's miracle. <clears throat> But the devil doesn't stop there. He tries to make these people fall into great sin because he likes blood. But then there are children who are born. And then he brings up his own agenda of trying to confuse them so as to fight back at God since God creates the child in the womb. Sometimes they are girls, sometimes they are boys. And the evil wants to fight back by saying, No, God, I'm not a little girl or I'm not a little boy. When the child is still trying to develop their mind, it takes a long time for a child's mind to develop. And so the evil one tries to put in his evil, confusion, since all confusion comes from him. And much talk has been heard concerning <clears throat> abortion. But we should talk also about <clears throat> what happens when a child is conceived, and how a child is conceived, and how one can be a chosen vessel 
of the Holy Spirit. Then we should look at the example today of Joachim and Anna. But we should also keep in mind the example of Zacharias and Elizabeth, because there were parallels there. Both of them were humiliated. They were humiliated because they did not have children, and yet they were well stricken in years, as we hear in the scriptures. Humility brings great things. And so in their humility and in their grief, they prayed that the Lord would give to them a child. And the Lord did not disdain their request, but he tarried because they needed to pray a little more so that they could be deemed worthy to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit in their children. And so Joachim and Anna prayed, and Joachim was humiliated because the high priest did not accept his gift because he didn't have a child, and it looked like in those days people interpreted that as a curse. God did not bless them with children, and so Joachim was quite humiliated, and he went and prayed, and he poured out his heart to the Lord, and Anna as well. Finally, the Lord gives them at the right time the gift. The mother of God is conceived in the womb of Anna. She prays for years before this, together with her husband, and we heard in the service, there is no mother like you, Anna. There was no mother like you until the mother of God. And we heard in the service, what kind, who can compare to the father? Joachim, he's the greatest of all fathers for he was the father of the mother of God. And in like manner, <clears throat> Zacharias, who was a high priest at the time of the offering of the incense, was given to know that he would bear, his wife would bear a child. And they had the great John. After the conception, both went into seclusion, both prayed, the mother of God and St. Elizabeth, uh, the St. Anna and Elizabeth. And St. Anna prayed with great fervor. And we have to realize that, as we heard in the service last night, that the, uh, the mother of God lends flesh to Christ, he takes upon himself the flesh, the human form, through the Mother of God. This is a, a, an amazing event. It's amazing. Through this uh, event and during this whole process of the conception and the period of pregnancy of St. Anna and in the pregnancy of any mother, the mother is helping the child grow in her womb. She needs to eat proper foods so that the child can develop. But not much talk is being given about the spiritual element. Before the child is born, before the child is even conceived, the parents need to pray. And I mentioned this system because mothers can become one of the greatest soldiers against this system of indoctrination, of demonic indoctrination. Mothers, of course, play a very important role. Look at the Mother of God. She has the prominent role after God. The Mother of God is not a priest, like the apostles were high priests, yet she has a prominent role. Men and women have different roles in life. They both play very significant roles. And so the mother plays an extremely significant role in raising this little child from the time of conception. We know this also from the meeting of Elizabeth with the Holy Mother of God. For when the babe 
St. John the Baptist, who was still in the womb of Elizabeth, heard the voice of the salutation of the Mother of God, and the babe leaped in her womb. It says the scriptures. It reacted. It's already reacting. So I think we need to come up with a good plan. Mothers have to come up with a good plan. Fathers as well. Before conception, they need to say some serious prayers, knowing what we're dealing with, knowing today's society, knowing what we're faced with. Sometimes parents get discouraged. They don't want to raise children in such a society. That's not the answer either. The answer is to prepare from the very beginning, actually before the beginning, with prayer and fasting. While the mother, the mother is trying to raise the child in her womb, before she raises the child as a little child, the child can detect many things. The child participates in the sanctification of the mother. When the mother goes to confession, when the mother prays, when the mother takes Holy Communion, the child is sanctified. When the mother sins, the child is affected. So there must be prayer. The mothers need to learn how to pray. And I know this. I've seen it. I know it from parents. I see it in children. Sometimes little children from the time they're little, very little, they know how to pray. It comes natural to them. This is one of the best ways to fight the beast. We're not going to be able to put up our dukes. We can't really match. But we have to be able to bring forth true children. And it has to begin before the beginning. Prayer, fasting, alms, heartfelt prayer. Sometimes the Lord permits that the mother in during her pregnancy is goes through some difficult trials. During that time she can pray. During that time she can shed tears and she can pour forth her heart to the Lord. Those are such beautiful things for the little one inside the womb of the mother. Looking at the example of Saint Joachim and Saint Anna, since we commemorate today the birth of the Holy Mother of God, we see the beauty of that type of fruit. And Saint Anna said, she made a vow, I will offer this child to thee, O Lord, her that is, and she received her that is chosen before all generations, her that is prophesied about in the Psalms, the Queen who stood at the right hand of the Most High God is the Mother of God. So she is born, and we celebrate her feast today. And we honor her, <clears throat> who is more honorable than the cherubim in all creation. That is the message that I want to send out today to mothers and to fathers. Please take your spiritual life more seriously. You have a great responsibility to bring forth your own fruit, your children. Have a holiness in your lives and at home. I've also heard from people who were brought up Orthodox, but somehow maybe lapsed a little bit. It's not as if they apostatized, but they just weren't good at going to church. They weren't good at fasting. And then their children apostatize. And then they get grieved over the fact that their children apostatize. And it doesn't dawn on them that it's their fault. It is true that each individual is an individual. And they're free to make their own decisions. But the cultivation of a child begins at home with the parents, and more specifically, with the mother. 
Let us all pray for the mothers and the fathers. Let us pray that they will be able to bring forth children who will be well-pleasing to God. May the Lord send his blessings on all mothers so that they can fight this evil system and learn how to offer their children to the Most High God as his meat and not just as a formality. In other words, they should not just bring their children to church to get baptized, their little babies go and get baptized just for the sake of being baptized and that's it. Let them understand what that baptism is. Let them remember the importance of preparation and preservation of grace. In like manner, every single one of us, as we participate in the gifts of grace which the Lord gives us, let us prepare, like Joachim, Anna, like Zacharias, Elizabeth, like Moses, who fasted for three days to partake, to receive the tablets of the law. In like manner, we should prepare ourselves as much as possible to participate in the Holy Eucharist. With prayer, fasting, vigil if possible. And that way we can receive, and we have prepared to receive the gifts of grace. But then let us not forget that it's not just about preparation, but it's also about preservation after we participate. Let us preserve that grace. And that is what happened both in the case of St. Joachim and Anna and in the case of Zacharias and Elizabeth. That is what happened in the case of the Mother of God. That is what happened in the case of St. John the Baptist. After the birth of the Mother of God, there was prayer, there was fasting, and then there was her entrance into the Holy of Holies. And after the birth of the Baptist, Elizabeth takes him into the desert already, fleeing Herod in prayer and under these circumstances of distress, people learn how to pray. Lastly, I want to also just stress, once again, understanding the whole concept of what I talk about when I talk about God's timetable. Saints Joachim and Anna had to wait for this gift because they had to prepare as immature, young <clears throat> newlyweds, they weren't ready to receive the gift of the Mother of God. They had to have a, a long time of prayer so that they could be ready to receive the gift. Like Zacharias and Elizabeth as well. They had to pray to be ready to receive the gift. And so, what a gift. What a gift after such patience, after such humiliation, after such prayer, after such fasting, look at the gifts they received. So let us not be distressed or discouraged when we feel that we're not getting the gift that we want right away. In our foolishness, we think we know better than God. Sometimes we get upset with Him. Why aren't you answering my prayers? As if He's the servant. We are the servants, and so we submit to Him. He's God. We bow down before Him. We offer incense to Him. We worship Him. It's up to Him. And so in order to receive the gift, He is the all-wise God. He knows exactly what He's doing. In order to receive that gift, we have to struggle a little more. We have to prove ourselves to be ready for that gift. It's not just going to come very easily. But those of us who were brought up in the faith and those of us who learned how to pray and those of us who had had it easy, so to speak, we owe it to our mothers. And we also owe it to our fathers for their prayers. But especially for the mothers, nine months of carrying us in the womb and helping shape us. God bless you mothers. And God bless you, fathers, and may God help you to be good parents.
so that you can lead your children to the heavenly kingdom. The prayers of the Most Holy Mother of God, of Saints Joachim and Anna, of Saint Zacharias and Elizabeth, and of all the saints. Amen.